Ross toaster. <laughs> He's actually just on the other side of the bed there. He loves uh, leaning against the pillows over there. I think he likes Kent's pillows <laughs> better than mine. <laughs> It's Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. Welcome to episode 183 of the Love and Stitches podcast. Today is Wednesday, May 31st, 2023. I think I realized that I have completely forgotten to say the date for the last, uh, pretty much all the podcasts I can remember recording in the last few months. I like having the date in there. I think it's kind of fun because if you are going back and watching these at an, a later date, it's kind of fun to see like, okay, what was going on like in the world at that time? I don't know. I just think it's really, really fun. Toaster has joined me here today. He is laying on top of my scrappy gray square blanket. I thought it would be fun to lay down a blanket that I actually made since I've been making so many this year. One thing to address before we move on, you might be able to tell by my voice that I am recovering or still in the thick of a little bit of a cold, so you may kind of hear my voice come and go a little bit throughout today's podcast. Also, I am in the stage of having to blow my nose every like 100 seconds, basically. I am uh, making sure I don't destroy my my delicate nose with some Vaseline. So if you're like, wow, her nose looks like red and shiny like Rudolph, that is what is going on. Don't worry, I'll cut out any coughs or sneezes or <laughs> blowing my nose. You don't need to bear with any of that, but just so you know what is going on right this very second. It's a beautiful sunny day here in New York City. We are going to be wrapping up May's makes. I'm going to be sharing with you my plans for June. It's probably going to be another long episode, so grab something to drink and let's get to it. Okay, first things first, I have an FO this week. This is the Ripple Camisole by Jessie Made Designs. This is my first Jessie May pattern and it was wonderful. The instructions were super great. I loved it so much. I'm going to put it on for you in just a second and I'm going to wear it for the rest of the podcast episode because it is warm in here. I've got my fan going, but it is still quite warm um, in with all the windows and everything. I think it's probably not so warm outside, maybe like 70, but beautiful nonetheless. But anyway, back to this. So I started this, I actually wanted to see on my notes, on May 12th, and I finished it yesterday on May 30th. So about two and a half weeks worth of knitting. I'm gonna update you on what has been going on for the past week with like blocking and finishing and all of that in just a second. But let me share with you the yarn. So this yarn is from a homespun house. It was the full skein that came with the advent in 2022. It's called Land of Sweets. And it is such a soft, soft yarn. It feels so good. So I don't want to wait any longer. I am going to put this thing on and share a little bit more about it. Okay, here it is. It is so cute. You saw how small that it was. It is designed to fit with negative ease. So I knit the size small and I have a 34 inch bust, sometimes 34 and a half, sometimes 35. I don't know. It always seems to be changing slightly depending on the time of the month. Um, but I figured small was going to be my best bet because it would give me about 10 inches of negative ease, which is what was recommended in the pattern. So here it is. She is very tiny. I am wearing high-waisted pants. My belly button is here, just as a, a point of reference. And I'll tell you some of the things that I did um, that kind of adjusted things and like things that I learned in case you're making this. Um, here's what the back looks like. It's very, very cute. And it was also very fun to knit and so quick. And I was able to get it out of one skein of yarn. I'll show you my leftovers here in a second as well. So I'm really, really happy with it. I have ordered a pink bra um, that is not quite as like high as this one as far as the little triangles go. And I think that will look a little better with it. But for today, just bear with me. We're just going to all pretend that we can't see these straps that are like super stretched out. <laughs> do you ever do that? Like where you wear the same like bra or you've had like the same underwear for like so long and then you finally get new underwear, bra or socks or something like, you know, essentials. You get new ones for yourself and you're like, why did I wait so long? 
<laughs> that's kind of where we're at right now with with some of my clothing here i just haven't had a need to replace things and then i do and i'm like wait why did i wait okay there we go so here's what's happened over the last week i have some pictures to show you as well so I was working on the body last time I recorded a podcast. I was getting really close to the 12 inch mark, which is where the pattern says to knit for the body. It's supposed to be, I mean, full length, but not like long. You know, you could always make it longer if you had extra yarn. And I believe that there are instructions in the Ravelry description for like how much yarn or yardage you'll need per inch that you want to add, which I think is a very nice thing. But I wanted to make it a kind of according to pattern and I've been noticing that I actually really like the way a like fuller length crop looks on my body with my shape so I am leaning into that with the new things that I'm making. So I decided to do the 12 inches but I knew that when I blocked the body it was going to stretch widthwise and lose some of its length. So here's a picture of what it looked like before I did any blocking at all. So it's just a tube. It's so funny because the stitch count was only eight stitches more than I've done for my hats. So it was hard to believe that it was actually going to fit on my body because obviously head is smaller than body, um, but it did fit. It's very, very crazy. So that was before blocking. And then here's a picture of me trying it on after I blocked the body. So the 12 inches that I got when it was shrunk up like that, once it was stretched out and on my body, it was really more like 11 inches. So I then knit another inch so that I could have 12 inches of body blocked. Now, what I didn't realize at that point, because it said um, either like mid chest or mid bust, and I was imagining that being here, like, you know, nipple line, but actually this is the point of the mid bust. So it was really more like underarm. Um, so if you're making this and you're wanting to try it on and kind of see like how long it's going to be on you, I would suggest like putting on whatever bra you're gonna wear with it. And like when it goes over the top of that bra, cause like here's mine, when it goes over the top of that bra, that's where your body ends. Make sure it can still fit under your arms, all of that. So I just realized there was a difference for me in between what I was thinking of as middle as what was actually the middle. And so I kind of wish I had added a little more length here. I can tell I'm getting a little out of breath because I can barely breathe through my nose. But again, just bear with me today. Hopefully I should be all better by next week. Drink some water so I can keep my voice going. Um, so maybe a little longer next time because I do want to make this again, but I am still like really pleased with it. So then I knit the top portions. There's like a little triangle here, a little triangle here. You do the straps, same with the back, although they're shorter triangles. And Jessie Maid has really great tutorials on her Instagram that anybody can look at. So if there's ever um, a stitch, like there was a brand new stitch for me called the center single decrease, I think is what it was called. And reading the written instructions, I did not understand it, but I went and looked at her Instagram reel tutorial and it made perfect sense and it's a really cool stitch. So that was fun. I got to learn something new this week. Um, but yeah, so I worked through all of that. And when I went over to work the, like the top little bits and the I cord here, I switched over to my double pointed needles and I just used them flat. So just knitting back and forth, but it was really nice to have that extra set of needles to work on. It just, I don't know, it made the little, you know, tiny bits a little bit easier to do. So that was, that's a little tip if you're working on straps. I really like having double pointed needles around in my needle kit to not actually use as DPNs most of the time, just as like an extra needle. It's really nice. Um, and then after I did the straps, I put just little light bulb stitch markers on the last few stitches of the front strap and the back strap for both, and I blocked it for a final time. I wanted to see if the straps would stretch before I seamed them together, um, and they did stretch. I ended up taking out 14 rows, which was like seven um, stitches if you count it on the front because it's I-cord. It's like a slip stitch I-cord. So I ended up taking seven rows out of the back straps and I actually kind of like that because it means that the seam, instead of the seam being like right at the top of the shoulder, the seam for me is about right here because I don't think my seam looks super great. Um, I do wish there was a tutorial for how um, 
Jessie Mae did that because I did Kitchener, but I didn't think that it looked really great. So like, I wish it was a little more finished looking. I'm sure there's some way to do it. It's not bad, um, but I'm kind of glad it's not like sitting at the top. It's a little bit um, put, pitched a little bit back. I keep hitting my water, so sorry. Um, so that all worked out great. I think at that point, I probably did bring this line up a little bit. Like it probably could be further down, but I didn't want it further down. So I brought it up. I shortened the straps a little bit. Um, what's so weird is I almost always need to add depth to armholes on sweaters, but on tanks and stuff with straps in like things that aren't handmade too, I always have an issue with them being too long. <laughs> so I don't know what that means. I feel like I have a, maybe I have like a larger arm than my bust measurement, but I actually have like a short shoulder. I don't know, but I, I, or maybe it's more my bust. It's probably my bust <laughs> being very small for my frame. But anyway, I love that I was able to adjust that. And I feel like there's still gonna be some stretch like as I wear this. So I didn't want them to be too long and then sliding off and all of that. So I think it looks really, really good. It came out great. Um, so for next time, if I were to make this again, um, a couple things I would change. I think I would actually try going up one size in the tank top just to see the difference that, that would make. I'm actually really happy with the way that it fits here throughout the body. I think it looks fine. It feels great on the bust, but I feel like I maybe could use a little bit wider span here. I feel like that would maybe look a little bit better. I don't know. Actually, it looks pretty much fine. I'm just thinking about that for the next one. I would definitely add more length. I would consider the end of the body to be like at the middle of my sternum. Well, I don't know. Is that a sternum? That's your sternum, right? <laughs> I would consider it to be right above the center of my bra rather than further down, just knowing that that's where I want it to be on me. And then the other thing I would do is explore making wider straps. I think that, you know, if you just stopped decreasing a few rows earlier, you could continue the straps with a few more stitches. It would cover up a bra a little bit better. And it would be fun just to have kind of a different version of this uh, camisole be a little more like a tank top, which I think would be really, really cool. So all in all, this pattern, 10 out of 10, I really love it. It's so comfortable. Um, if you are somebody who um, doesn't need like the support of a bra or just enjoys not wearing a bra, you can wear this braless and it's very comfortable. I think around the house, I am gonna be doing that because it, I feel like it's something that's very cute to wear with like basically what I'm wearing now. I'm wearing like flare, <laughs> yoga pants and a tank top and then if I had like a cute cardigan on I mean it would just be so so cozy but also like I think that's the point of me getting a pink bra is I want it to be you know look a little more when I go out and wear this I do want to have on a bra and I think that having a pink one will like look very cute so I'm excited for that to come in I ordered it um the day that I no the day before I finished it, um, my friend Amy, who was also making the Ripple Camisole, we cast them on together. She was like, I ordered a pink bra for it. I'm like, that's so smart. Why did I not think about that? So I ordered myself um, one too, and I'm excited to get it in. Okay, one more thing. I wanted to share with you how much yarn is left over. So again, I made this size um, small. I followed the pattern except for adding one extra inch of length to get it to be 12 inches. Although I guess that's still according to pattern because it's just like blocked 12 inches. Um, so here is the yarn that I have left over. Now with just the leftover knitting yarn, I think I had, oh wait, hold on, I have a picture of it here. I think I had about um, seven and a half grams, but when you add in the swatch, which I didn't cut, so I could have gone back and used this swatch anytime, and it's a really big swatch. When you add the swatch and the leftover yarn, I had almost uh, just over 20 grams. So all in all, this only used 80 grams of yarn. That's pretty wild. That's like a really small amount of yarn for a top. So I am very happy with it. I can see myself making more of these, making little tweaks on them, and definitely knitting more of Jessie Maid's patterns in the future. Next up is my blanket. I am sad to say that it is not done yet. 
Today is the last day of May and that was my goal to finish this blanket. I'm really close, but I did lose a little bit of steam on it over the last week. Um, I don't even know if it was steam specifically on the blanket or more that I got interested in other projects a little bit more and they just like suited what was happening in my week a little bit better. So I'm not trying to beat myself up about this. I do plan to finish it here in the next week or probably few days and it will still be done. It's not that big of a deal if it's not done directly at the end of May like I planned. I feel like having a plan to get it done by the end of May was a great motivator to do as much as I could in May and it's still getting done like faster than if I had just said, I'll finish it when I finish it, if that makes sense. It was like a good, uh, it was a carrot <laughs> to get me there. Um, but I still done quite a lot. So let's see, where is the beginning of this? Um, luckily I just finished a color last night and I haven't done any more, so I don't have any yarn attached to it right now. So I can really take it out and show it to you. This is the Crochet Advent Baby Blanket by Lucien Crochet with a couple of modifications that I have in my project page. I did not cast on or chain as many stitches as the pattern called for because I actually went up a hook size and went up in gauge. I also am not doing the main color like little stripe in between the colors and I have 31 colors instead of 24. Okay, so let me step back and show you what it's looking like so far. I have just four colors left. Like I said, I'm really close um, to the end. So here is the edge that I'm working on right now. And then here it is all the way up to the start of it. And it does look really cool. Like you can tell like these yarns were groups of five. You can tell they go dark to light, dark to light, dark to light, which is really, really interesting. I don't know if I totally picked up on that when the yarns were in mini skeins, but as it's coming out, I'm really seeing how that looks and it's really, really cool. Sorry, we're getting a little bit choppier as things go on as I have a little bit more coughing with all the talking, but we will bear with it and get through it. Okay, so let's see the colors that I have worked on this week are all grass type Pokemon. So this entire blanket, um, the yarn is from Fangirl Fibers and it's all Pokemon themed. And I'll just share with you what we've gone through so far. So the first five colors were normal type Pokemon, then fire, then electric, then water. And that brings us to this week. So I did put in my very cute Pikachu stitch marker and this dark green marks the beginning of the grass type Pokemon. So let's see, what did we do this week? So the first one, the dark green is called the grass type. Then, let me get these in the right order. The next one here is Bulbasaur. Then this really bright green, I really liked this one. I'm not usually a green person, but it's a fun way to like use colors you don't really use a lot in a blanket. This one is, what is it, Roselia or something? Ro Rose, Roselia. The next one is, oh, it's another Eevee evolution. Leafeon right here with the yellow, the yellowy green. Right there. These colors are all very similar, but you can actually see the difference between them for sure. And you can see how they relate to the color. And then the last grass type is this one. Hold on. This one right here. And that is Rowlet. Now this color actually ended up one, being one of my favorite colors. Technically is not part of the like groups of five um, mini skeins. It was actually the last color, the 31st color in the entire set. And I think it's called Gotta Catch Em All. But the next set of five that we're going into are all pinks, they're all fairy type. And so I thought that color fit in better here, like after all the greens, than it would putting it at the end um, in the order that it came in. So that brings us to the fairy type Pokemon. I have been waiting for this like since the beginning to crochet in these pink colors. So I'm so excited. I've only got one in so far, 
and I have four more to go and then this blanket is going to be finished. They're already wound. They're already ready for me. I just need to do it. Um, but I definitely have been getting distracted by some other projects. So the first one here, oh wait, am I missing a card? Oh no, there it is. I was gonna say. Um, the first one here is called the fairy type. As we go into our last Pokemon type. And this one is a very, very light color. It's got just little speckles of pink and blue. Um, throughout it. It's really, really pretty. But then as we actually get into more of the fairy type, I think this is the next one. It gets like a little pinker, which is exciting. And then let's see, here's the last ones. These ones are all definitively pink. I don't think this is exactly the right order, um, but I've got them in pink cozies as well, which is so fun. I love being able to kind of match my my mini yarn cozies to the type so i definitely plan to finish this <laughs> this next week and get it done um toaster has been waiting for it i don't think he needs a blanket right now it's pretty warm in this room but it is definitely big enough for him like it's already long enough for him i compared it um to his blanket that we always keep in his bed and it's going to be about like two or three inches wider and like six inches longer than the blanket he like a store-bought blanket that we have for him so i think it's really going to be the perfect size i've also been weaving in my ends as i go so when this is done it's just a matter of washing it to kind of let everything just relax let it be clean i've been taking it around with me a lot of places and this beauty will be done so remember how I said I was slightly distracted from working on the blanket this week because I was doing something else? Well, that something else is all of this. <laughs> I have been working on all of my Sock Week socks this week for various reasons, and I have been keeping them exactly like this with <laughs> the cake and the needles stuck in like that and I've been leaving them in like different parts of my house I've had one um, sat up here on the bed behind me for morning knitting I've had another one um, this one actually as of late attached to my backpack for when I go ever I go out and about out of the house um, so I've just been working on all of them basically wherever they suit my needs so I think I first pulled them all out last week, maybe last Wednesday, because I needed some easy, simple knitting during therapy. And so I was working on um, this sock, actually. So let's talk about each of them in turn. So these are all Sock Week 2023 sponsored yarns. And I believe all of them are still available as pre-orders. So if you're still looking to grab one of them, um, I will have the shop links down below so you can go um, to those shops. But this one is from Nicole C. Mendez and it is called Sock Island. I am using the Soft Sock Base. It's a really fun um, self-striping yarn. And I'm just doing a slip stitch pattern. I've thought about making this into a pattern, but um, I've already had like two people reach out to me and say they've seen similar patterns. So I don't know. The slip stitch pattern itself is not really something that is, um, like an original idea like this slip stitch pattern has existed forever and ever but i don't really know if i can add something super new to the sock i have seen that the socks that are out so far that have this slip sh slip stitch pattern have different heels um and i'm planning to do sort of a like a combo short row heel and um gusset kind of thing in the back so i don't really know yet i might just be making these for me and that's quite all right i'm also using my bobbles and berries stitch marker which is hand embroidered there are more of these too so i got just a little bit done on this one um but i'm gonna be doing about five and a half inches i think before i start transitioning to the heel for this one and it's coming out so pretty these are going to be very tall socks the other one then that i was working on are these socks and making shorties these are cesium yarns isn't it so interesting how it went from micro stripes to these big sections of pooling because of the different stitch counts so i think i had like more like 64 stitches here and something like 56 here so wild right so this is cesium yarns and this is the sea slug sock set 
super, super fun. So I got through that. I didn't have much of it. You can see that's where I was last week. I didn't have much left. Um, but then I started this next one for walking to a doctor's appointment. So I worked on this while I walked to my doctor's appointment and while I waited in the lobby. Then I realized that I needed some sock knitting for the weekend because we were going to a Broadway show. We were planning to go see The Little Mermaid and I needed some socks that were ready for just like plain stockinette, stockinette knitting. So this sock was already in the perfect place because I was here on the leg and here's my little Grizzly Knits marker. This yarn is out of Australia. It is Obsession Yarns and it is called Enchanted. It's so beautiful and this base is so soft. Oh my gosh, it's called Enchanted. So I didn't touch this one for a little while because I wanted to leave um, basically this whole section here of the leg before I did my increases. I wanted to leave for the movies um, and for a Broadway show, which is what I ended up working on during the Broadway show. But then after it got past the point of just plain tubing and I needed to do increases and then I've just finished the heel, this turned into my morning knitting. So I just finished the heel this morning while I was reading. So that sock has gotten a lot of work on it this week. It's a nice tall sock, very nice and fitted. I'm doing my perfect fit sock formula for this one. And then the last sock here, this one was great for the movies. I worked on it during The Little Mermaid. And now this sock has become my walking sock because it's in an easy enough point to walk with. And I already have one, like, like I'm not even kidding. This has been sitting back there. This has been um, in my Cottontail Farm uh, case. It has been strapped to my backpack for out and about knitting. Um, I've been working on this one while I've been on the go. And look, I've gotten so much done on this one this week. Here's my Simply Serving markers. I'm trying to use all my Sock Week stuff as much as I can. Um, by the way, guys, once you get your Sock Week stuff, you don't have to wait until Sock Week to do one sock. Like if you want to crack open your yarn, knit one sock, and then save making the second sock for Sock Week because Sock Week starts July 9th. And in order to qualify for prizes, you need to start and finish the single sock in that week, July 9th, 9th to the, through the 16th. But that doesn't mean you can't do the first sock ahead of time, or maybe you know you can make more than one pair out of your single skein of yarn, or maybe you literally don't care about prizes and therefore you don't have to follow the rules. You can just play along and participate with everybody. So. You don't have to wait, basically. I'm not waiting. <laughs> I'm working on my socks now. I don't really have a goal like, am I gonna finish all these socks before sock week? Probably not, but I am hoping I get at least one of the pairs all done before sock week. Anyway, back to this yarn. Um, I've been using my markers, also, also been using my bags. Actually, everything has been in uh, this bag. <laughs> so cute. Um, from Stolen Minutes. But this yarn, um, is get the label Rising Tide Fiber Co. And this sock set is called Jellyfish Jubilee. So fun. Okay, so this one is a like a midi sock. I find that I really like these when it's not cold, super cold outside, but it's not warm, where it's just a little bit taller. I have no, I have project pages for all of these socks with the details. So I think it's like 20 rounds for the cuff and 20 rounds for the leg. And I've done my perfect fit in here. So it's coming up great. My plan though, I don't think, oh crap. I don't have the orange with me because it's in my purse, <laughs> of course. Um, but my plan is to actually take the other mini skin color. It's a really bright orange. And for the last 12 rows of the foot, I'm going to do stripes. So I'll do like three rows of orange, three rows of mane, three rows of orange, three rows of mane, and then an orange toe. I started doing orange in the heel and I just didn't like the way that looked with it being so close already to this other um, contrast color. So I thought I would save the orange for the end of the sock. So I'm just experimenting basically with whatever feels fun at the moment with these socks and trying to use all my colors and trying to use all my yarns. And I'm, surpri I'm surprising myself that I am feeling okay having this many sock whips. Like, I think my brain wanted to go, okay, pick one sock, which was this pair because I finished the one sock and just complete it to the end and then take another sock and complete it to the end. Um, but I've actually found it's been nice to have socks in different stages so that I have 
almost always something that's almost ready or is already ready for just in the dark knitting, plain knitting in the round. So that's been really nice and actually really fun. So I will have to move all my markers on those and then kind of see whatever socks fit the, uh, the vibe for next week. We lost Toaster. <laughs> He's actually just on the other side of the bed there. He loves uh, leaning against the pillows over there. I think he likes Kent's pillows <laughs> better than mine. Um, but this brings us to our monthly segment, which is project planning. I absolutely love this time of month where I get to look back on kind of how my plans for the beginning of the month went for the month that we are ending. And then also think forward to the plans that are coming up. So let's talk about May plans and how they went first, and then we'll get into some June plans because I'm feeling really excited about what I have on my list. So I have a couple of videos that I talk about project planning in, but essentially I just make a little uh, notebook page. You can do this literally however you want or don't. You don't have to plan projects. It is whatever feels good to you. Um, but I just like to do this at the beginning of the month. I kind of brainstorm out anything that is on my mind. And then I divide the month up by weeks. I usually put the dates in. I've done that for June. And then I just kind of put a couple of things in each week on what I want to do. Like if I know for sure I want to cast something on, I make sure it's on that list. And then every single week I make changes and tweaks and adapt the plan. So here's what I thought I was going to do at the beginning of May. I had on my list all of the lights, citrine light, quadrophenia, a summer top of some kind, cozies because this is the cozy along month, and the crochet advent baby blanket. I actually ended up finishing four of those projects. So I finished citrine light. That one I had started previously. I didn't do a lot to finish it, but I did get it done. Um, I finished quadrophenia, which was a big blanket. I finished that in the middle of May. I finished my cozies, which was really fun because I made an entire set of mini yarn cozies for the cozy along. And then I finished this. I didn't know what top I was going to make at the beginning of May. I just knew I wanted to make a summer top and I started and finished it. As for the other two projects, the crochet advent baby blanket is almost done. And for all of the lights, I decided to cross that off my list and I wasn't going to worry about it because the yarn that I had picked for myself just wasn't feeling right. And I'll talk more about that in a second too. So that feels really, really good. I mean, you can see kind of throughout the month, the things that I had scheduled out mostly were the baby blanket. I've just been crossing it off. And then here in the fourth week, which was technically last week, I have four more colors left on my baby blanket. But for my June plans, I actually didn't plan anything for this week. So this week is, um, May through Wednesday and then tomorrow is June 1st or when you're watching this is June. Um, so I have a few days of June or a few more days of this week where I can actually just work on finishing the blanket and then my June plans don't technically start until next week, Monday, which I think is June 5th. Okay, so here's my June plans. This is what things look like at the beginning of the month. It's a lot more empty. I had so many things in my head. Um, when I did this yesterday, I was like, I just need to write them all down and then writing them all down kind of gets them out of my brain. And then I look at all the projects and I go, okay, obviously I can't get all of these things done. So if I had to pick what's most important to me for the next month, like what projects do I want to make sure that I am working on? And of course, if at any time I'm working on a project and it's like not feeling like the right timing for it, or I'm not enjoying it, I can change my plans. The plan is just a start. So here's just some of the things that I threw out there when I did my little brainstorming. Sock week socks. I didn't even write them individually. I just wrote them as one. Sock week socks. I've got four of them going. Um, an ice cream cozy. I saw this person made um, their uh, crochet, 100 gram crochet cozy fit on a Talenti gelato jar. And now I really want to make a Ben and Jerry's cozy and then maybe some more ice cream cozies as a design. So that may be happening. Um, an advent design I have in my head. Uh, I have one more set of minis left and I want to make a blanket with it. So it's a homespun house mini. So I just called it a homespun house blanket. Um, I have some pink yarn I want to use for a top. 
I want to remake my Twisted Tea shorts plus make a top out of the leftover yarn and then a Pokemon hat. So that was all going to be way too much to accomplish in the month. I also don't like to start too many new things because I feel, I've noticed that I feel a lot better when I have fewer projects and I can kind of work on maybe rotating around three or so projects. Um, that, that just tends to work out a little bit better for me. Um, so I then I went through and I put little stars. You can see a little, little asterisk over a few of the projects that sounded the most exciting to me. And let's talk about those <laughs> next. Um, okay, so the first thing, oh, I need a little water. The first thing is that I made this goal at the beginning of 2023 to have a scrap free 2023. And I am so close. We have one more month. June, that's the sixth month of the year, and then I will be at the end of my kind of six month concentrated goal for this um, kind of challenge. And I've made so much progress so far. I've not only been working through all of the advents that I had, I have been finishing um, lingering whips that have been around for years. I've been using my like truly scrappy things like actual leftovers um, for things like cozies and I've been giving them away. I've been doing so much work towards this one goal and it feels truly like I am just expanding on what my goal was last year, which was to have a stash, uh, have a zero skein stash. I don't have a zero sca a skein stash as of right now, but I am so much closer to not having any yarn that is just there kind of taunting me, making me feel like I need to work on it and being free to really work on what I want to work on. That being said, I don't feel like I'm being forced to work on things I don't want to work on right now. If I start on something and I don't like it, I just stop working on it and I give that away. <laughs> I give away the yarn or whatever, but I've been really liking working on blankets. So one of my priorities um, is to work on my last advent. That's not going to be a good idea. I need something to hold this open for me. There we go. Okay. Um, so here is my last advent. It is from 2022. It is a homespun house. And actually this yarn came with it. It was the full skein. So it's all the same base. So dreamy, so nice. But these colors are super fun. They're not a rainbow, um, but there is a rainbow assortment of colors. And I really like the colors. And so I kind of thought it would be very fun to make another blanket because I've just been loving blankets. But this time I wanted to make a blanket um, that was very small squares. Like, I don't know, I just had this like vision of myself just like making squares and setting them aside and just making the squares over the month of June, not worrying about putting the blanket together, just enjoying making the small squares and then later on actually assembling the blanket. There was a beautiful blanket that I saw on Instagram that there is not a pattern for right now. Plus it was a massive blanket, like maybe king size or queen size. And I don't have quite enough yarn for that. It's, um, these are, these are 20 gram minis. There's 24 of them. Um, so I was like, okay, that's not going to work. And then somebody sent me this blanket. I've got a picture of it here. It is called the Battenberg blanket. It is by Sandra Paul. Now I don't have enough yarn to make it this big, but the instructions are written in such a way that you can basically just make the squares and make a blanket as big as you want. So I saw that yesterday to do some math and kind of figure things out. Um, so first of all, I this is the yarn. But then I've got all of this mess. Um, I guess I thought that I would, because these bags that the yarn came in are so nice, I've been hanging on to them because I'm like, if I didn't use the yarn, I'll put them back in the bags to like give them to somebody because I want them to be able to open them and, and not see them. But now that I'm going to use the yarn, I'm like, it's silly to hold on to the bags. The bags have already uh, served their purpose. They have been the vessel that was for me to open them each day last year in December. I don't need to hold on to the bags. <laughs> so I think it's time to let go of the bags. Um, but what I also have in here is the project that I originally started. I don't know if you remember this, if you were watching Vlogmas last year, um, but I started making these pants. I thought, I think it's so funny now. I thought it was going to be like really cool to make like stripy flare pants. 
yeah, it was not looking, not looking good. These colors are beautiful and this does not do it justice. So I need to tear this out. So it's just been sitting here. But then somewhere in here, I've actually got my tester square. So this Battenberg blanket, it's a free pattern, by the way. And apparently there are some tutorials in it. Um, just an FYI, the pattern is written in UK crochet terms. So it says treble crochet. That's a double crochet here in the US. I had to keep like reminding myself double crochet, not triple crochet. Um, so this is a solid granny square. I think that's a general term. That's what it was called in the pattern. That's what it's called when you look it up. And it's really, really cool. I've never done a solid granny square before. You can see like when you kind of back away from it, that it kind of draws your eye to the uh, corners, like the diagonals, which is really neat. Um, but I really like it. I think it's kind of, in some way it's more like soft and vintage and charming, but in other ways it's a little even more modern. Like it, I feel like it does both and I don't know if that really makes sense, but I'm really attracted to the way that it looks and it's, it's easy and fun to make. So the Battenberg squares are supposed to be two inches across. So I made my two inch square and then I thought, okay, two inches, a two inch square is, um, about two, little less than two grams. So with a 20 gram mini, this is, this is not 20 grams right now, but with a 20 gram mini, I could make 10 of them. And then I was like, do I feel like I will enjoy making 10 tiny squares out of each of these minis? And I thought, I don't think so. I think I'm gonna add another round and just see like how much that is and how many squares I can make out of that. And also I have to thank um, my friend Amanda, who is making this Battenberg blanket, but modified it drastically and is making, I think like five and a half inch squares. She kind of gave me some tips and ideas on how I could make um, the squares bigger and still get a similar look. So thank you, Amanda. So then I added another round and made it three inches, did some math. Um, and then this one is three and a half inches. So I don't know, I kind of almost liked the three inch square a little bit more. Um, so I am gonna be thinking about it. I'm gonna be doing some math. I'm gonna be figuring out how big do I want this blanket to be. But I think this is gonna be my project, my last scrap, uh, scrap free 2023 project. And it's not gonna be finishing the blanket. It's going to be making all of these squares out of these yarns. I think it's gonna be really like charming and enjoyable to do. I don't know if I'll do them all in June, I would have to work through, if there's 24 colors and four weeks, um, excuse me, sorry. Okay, got some water and we're back. <laughs> if there are 24 colors, which there are, and four weeks in my June plan, then I would need to work through six colors a week. So that's a lot. I mean, I've been doing it with the Crochet Advent Baby Blanket. I actually was doing more than six colors a week, but I wasn't using up all the yarn. So this will be a little more crochet. So my plan as of right now, and I'm going to share more details when I actually start this project on like how big I decide the squares are going to be, all of that. My plan right now is just next week, June 5th. I like to do my weeks Monday to Sunday. I'm just going to begin to blanket and make a plan for the rest of the month. I haven't put anything else in there. Um, the other thing that I want to make sure that I start this month, let me see if I have this uh, listed next, is kind of a a rip out and a redo. So I really want to make myself some more summertime knits. This one turned out so great. I kind of want to continue on and make more. So when I was trying on all of my knits last week, I tried on my twisted tee shorts. This is a pattern by Brianna Lapino. It's a great pattern. These shorts are super, super comfy. But the thing is, I made these too big for me. They're a size too big, plus the rise, so like from the waistband to the crotch, is like two or three inches too long. They just don't fit me. And this yarn is actually three yarns. It's uh, Fangirl Fibers um, 50th anniversary like Disney color. It's this, and then the purple and the pink are two different colors. I just did helical knitting. I've got more of this left, and I really wanna make a twisted tee top to match this. So I have like a whole set of Disney, like, I don't know, I just think that would be super, super cute. And I would totally wear it around the house all of the time because it'd be so comfortable. So I'm gonna start with the shorts and see how much yarn I have left and add that with the other yarns that I have left. Um, 
and see if I'll be able to make my top from there and make the matching set. So my plan for the month of June is to rip this out section by section. I'm going to label everything as I rip it out. So like when I rip out these bottom pieces, I'll put them in a, maybe a little Ziploc bag with a post-it note that says um, bottom hem. Um, when I take out the you know body of the shorts, I'll label like body of the shorts. When I take out the top part, I'll say that. I guess actually I won't have to redo my I cord, which is a great thing. <laughs> it might be a little bit too long, but that's okay. Um, the waistband is not going to be that different, so that's actually some good news. I didn't even think about that until now. So I'm basically just going to pull the whole thing out and I'm going to start it again in a smaller size with less length and I can use my yarns from each section because it will be smaller. I'll have plenty of yarn for each thing. So that's something that I really want to do and then this will be a really great morning project, like out and about project when I'm not on the tricky parts and I remember enjoying knitting this project so much. So this is something that's definitely on the list. I don't know, did I say when I wanted to do that? Um, I think I'm gonna maybe hold off until the second week of June to rip them out. So I might not finish these in June and that's okay. And then I have one other project that I wanna make sure to get going in June. And that actually might happen this next week here. So my Pokemon crochet blanket that I have been working on this guy. I have a lot of leftover yarn. So every single color has left me with about five grams of leftover yarn. Now the project I'm planning to do will not use five grams. It may use like one gram of each color, but I really want to make Kent a muscle burl hat that is striped with those colors. However, half of it will be a solid color and half of it will not, um, will be the stripes. <laughs> so I asked Emily if she had yarn in the same base and she did. So this is um, my yarn I'm planning to use for Kent's Muscle Burrow hat and it's called Gray Skull. So I'm going to use this black, it's a solid black, and start with the black and make half of the Muscle Burrow hat. Once I see um, how long I need to make it for half, then I can count my rows and I can match it exactly but using the other yarn. So I really want to get this started and kind of get through half of the hat um, so that I can get onto the striping part because I think that's going to be really, really fun. And then something else cool that I discovered, and I don't have plans for this yet, but you may remember that last year at Rhinebeck, Kent picked out this really bright neon yarn from Cake Wool called Pepper. It's a, night, uh, a bright neon green and it is the neon green that the Dallas Stars, his favorite hockey team, have been using. And I've been needing a black yarn to match it. And this yarn, while not exactly the same base, is the same ply. And I think they would work together. So I'm kind of thinking if I can use about half of it for Kent's Muscle Burl hat, I can then have half of this black yarn to combine with this one to make him a Dallas Stars hat later down the line. So that's really cool because then I can get this out of my stash. It's been sitting there. It's been taunting me. It's a really fun color, but I've been wanting to use it and actually make something for Kent. So those are my starting plans for June. Of course, I'll be sharing updates in my podcast throughout the month of June. And of course, on my Instagram too, if you want to see anything behind the scenes and sooner. But the last thing I want to talk about is stash because even though I'm not in a like zero stash kind of a goal, I do want to maintain all of the work that I did last year. So I've just been kind of loosely tracking my stash. I still have yarn coming in. I have yarn going out. Um, so for the month of May, hang on, let me get back to this page. I had uh, a couple of yarns go out. So the yarn that went out is this a homespun house skein is out. I have a little bit left over, about 20 grams, and I think I'm gonna use it for my ice cream cozy that I want to design because I think that will be so cute and I love this yarn so much. Then I had the whole uh, Fangirl Fibers Pokemon advent calendar that I'm almost used up with and I will continue to use in that hat. And then with the leftovers of that, I'm planning to give it away to somebody because I just don't know if I can continue to use that same yarn over and over again. At that point, I will feel like I got everything out of it that I needed and I'll be ready to let it go. I also let go of a little bit more yarn. I've got a picture here 
of a big, um, it was like a two gallon bag of two gallon Ziploc bag of yarn that I gave away to somebody. I have been looking for somebody to give this yarn away to for years. I've been saving it for years. I have it all bagged like Advent style and I found somebody who is more than deserving. So I actually sent that off this week. You, I, I can't remember if I included that in my stash or my sta <laughs> scrap free 2023 video. I might have, but it also might have been one that was hiding because it was something I always planned to give away. So that's gone as well. And then um, here is what my yarn stash is looking like. I like to take a picture at the end of every month. And you may notice that something is missing. All of that yarn that I got from A Little Wolf Knits to make my all of the lights. So Sometimes it really helps to know the dyer and be friends with the dyer. And when I got that yarn, I just felt like it was too dark. It wasn't going to match what I was hoping for, um, for the All of the Lights sweater. And then Brie came out with a new yarn. If you haven't seen the Little Wolf Knits cookie collection, you need to go look at it now. It is so beautiful. She um, has this yarn called Biscuits with the Boss, which is... A reference to Ted Lasso and it is a beautiful color and I think it's going to be great for my all of the lights so this time I am getting one skein of yarn instead of like nine skeins of yarn and I'm going to swatch it and see if I like it and then I will order more yarn from the Little Wolf Knits we kind of worked out a little exchange um, and if you ever do this just know that um, like if you ever order one skein to swatch and then order more skeins, your next order that you do is not going to match your swatch yarn. So I'm doing this full well knowing that the skein that I order for swatching is just for swatching. It's probably not going to go into my sweater anywhere because it won't match the other ones. And I'm okay with it because it's worth it to me to get the yarn that is going to work for my sweater, if that makes sense. So I'm very excited um, to get that and maybe see if I can start working on all of the lights at some point in the near future. So what's left in my stash now, I actually just brought everything over here because I don't know, I just like to kind of think through things. So I already showed these two. This one I'm going to get started on in the month of June for Kent's hat. This one is going to rest for a little longer, but may eventually get paired with this for another hat for Kent. I have this beautiful self-striping yarn I got at Bliss Yarns a couple of months ago and my mom said she would love socks out of this. So probably once I'm done with all my sock week socks, I will be casting on some socks for my mom. And then I have these two skeins of yarn. These are left over from a blanket. Um, when Whitney sent me some yarn for my blanket, she sent me three skeins and I only needed a portion of one. So I actually have like two and a half skeins. And I'm trying to decide if I want to do a top out of this yarn. Like, I don't know if it's going to be a color that I will like on me or not. But there's lots of tops out there that are two skein, two and a half skein tops, like a short sleeve top. So this may be another summer top coming down the line. We shall see. So those are just the full skeins. I obviously have some other leftovers and things that are still kind of lingering and hiding in different places, but I am getting super super close to that goal of having just nothing no scraps no skeins just completely free and stashless <laughs> toilet paper so I had to go get <laughs> another roll. <laughs> Didn't you want to know that? I could, I think I can see my nose just getting like redder and redder throughout this uh, ordeal. It is very silly but hopefully that means my my cold is making its way out of my body. I actually feel a lot better like since even starting the podcast so yay. <laughs> do, you, do you remember like people in high school I feel like that would walk around with like a roll of toilet paper um, or <laughs> a tissue box and they had a cold. It was always so sad. <laughs> anyway, let's get into some questions. If you do have a question for me, please leave it in the comments down below. But first put hashtag question so I can easily find and locate your question and answer it in the next podcast. There are always too many questions for me to answer in every single one. So if I don't get to your question that you asked last time, feel free to put it again. If I see repeated questions, I try 
always to answer those. Um, this week, as always, we had amazing questions. I actually decided to answer six of them this week instead of five, like I normally do, because I just couldn't narrow them down. There's some really good discussion ones, so feel free to add your piece into the comments as well. Here is the first question. This one is from Geek DIY. In a world where we have mostly digital patterns, why are they all still written like we have to conserve paper? As a relatively new pattern knitter, it's like having to learn another language. Thanks for keeping me company while I, I attempt German short rows for the first time. Okay, so this one's not exactly a question per se that like has an answer, but I thought it was a really good um, point of discussion. And I would love to hear what you think about this as well. Also, do you use a digital pattern or do you print the pattern out? I write my patterns assuming, not assuming, but hoping that people will use them digitally because of course it wastes less paper. Um, it actually costs you less because you don't have to print it out and everything. And I like to use my iPad um, to view patterns. I have a mini iPad. Oh, I should have brought it. I think it's in the living room. I have a mini iPad, so it's like this big. And I just always, I buy them refurbished so they're not as expensive. And that's pretty much all I use them for that. And when I travel, I will watch Netflix on them. <laughs> it's really, really great. Um, but I like digital patterns because with a digital pattern, I can zoom in as close as I need so I can make the font really, really big, which is so useful for me. I can also like draw on it and cross things out, but then if I need to go back and repeat something, like if I have to rip things out, I don't have to erase, I can just undo. Um, plus the Knit Companion app is great, that's what I usually use, and it has so many different features in it. I, I love digital patterns, I'm a digital pattern girl, but I would love to hear if some of you um, prefer uh, printed out patterns and why. I'm just curious, why do you prefer digital or why do you prefer paper? So anyway, back to this. Um, so it sounds like you are new to written patterns and it is totally a different language. I don't know if um, lengthening the explanations would make it much better. It's totally a different language that you will learn with time. So like, don't beat yourself up. We all have to look things up all of the time all of the time. Like with this pattern, I learned a brand new stitch, a center single decrease. I went from like where it was written in the pattern to the reference page where written instructions were and I still didn't understand it. So then I went to the video tutorial. So you're not doing anything wrong. You're not behind. This is actually pretty normal, I would say. And you will continue to like learn and develop new skills um, with reading patterns and you're doing a great job. So if you're handling German short rows, you're doing great, I promise you. Um, but you're right, patterns don't have to be so condensed anymore. So if you were a knitter or crocheter um, in the age of where patterns were not available on resources like Ravelry or other sites or Etsy, um, a lot of times you would buy a printed out pattern in a yarn store, like a, in a plastic sleeve, or you would buy a book, um, or you would get it out of a magazine. The magazines were the worst, right? I feel like they would get a whole sweater pattern on like half of a page in a magazine. So everything was abbreviated. There wasn't a lot of detail. Um, and you really had to just like be brave and like go into it. Now we have so many more resources. Um, you can really like put a lot of details into a pattern. You can link to video tutorials. Um, you can have like a reference page in a pattern and it's so, so beautiful. Um, so yeah, designers, they don't really need to limit themselves on a page count anymore. Although I have heard, and actually this came up um, when my friend Amy and I were knitting this top, I think she made the comment like, it seemed like a long pattern because it was nine pages long or something. So I wonder if people are in general a little bit intimidated when a pattern has a lot of pages. But just because a pattern has a lot of pages, it doesn't mean it's a complicated pattern. It might actually mean that the designer has really good explanations as it did in this one. I actually, I already said this, but I really love how Jessie Mae, she would, she would say things like, you need to knit this many stitches and then your next stitches are going to look like this and the first ones should look like this. It wasn't too wordy, but it was just wordy enough to really help you have a double check on almost everything that you did. So I thought, it was perfect, two thumbs up for Jessie Maid. So I don't know if this really answers your questions, but I would love to have like a discussion about this. And uh, if you think the pattern designers should 
put a little bit more um, wording into their patterns because you don't need to worry about things getting printed out. Okay, next question is from Erica. Um, this question says, with your website being under construction, are you still selling Love & Stitches merchandise? Or will that come back when the construction is complete? Thank you. Okay, so my website is under construction, but I'm actually building a new website. So my old website is still there. It's still nittynatty.com. I'm just not updating it as much anymore because I'm putting more effort into working on my new site. When the new site is done, I will take nittynatty.com away from that old website and make it go to the new website. And so there really shouldn't be any like issues for finding things. However, my merchandise shop is on a completely different website altogether. So it is up, it has been up, and it will never go, or it has not gone away and it won't go away. You can access it now. I always have it linked in my description box, like towards the bottom. I just have links that I always include in my YouTube videos. And my website is one of them, but also the merch website. I also bought the domain Knitting Shirts dot com and knitting shirt dot com. I bought them both. They both go to my merch website. So if you just go to knitting shirts or knitting shirt dot com, you will be rerouted to my merchandise website. So all of that is still up and available. And this coming Friday, I'm going to be adding sock week merch on there. So maybe hold off on ordering anything until that new merchandise is up. This question comes to us from Madeline. Question, have you ever attended a worldwide Knit in Public Day meetup? It's coming up in June and there are a couple meetups near me. You answered a question about, or your answer about knitting in public made me think that trying with a group first might be a little less anxiety inducing than trying by myself for the first time. Thank you for all the amazing goodness you share online, planning on sock week to knit my first ever pair of socks. Oh my gosh, that's really exciting. Okay, so. Um, Worldwide Knit in Public Day is coming up on Saturday, June 10th. I actually have that in my notes to share about in the next segment in the news, um, but I think you should definitely go to a knitting meetup. I'm planning to go to one myself here in New York City. There are several meetups happening in Bryant Park. If you are local to New York City, see you there. I'm going to be there in the afternoon. I'm also planning to do one virtually with my Love & Stitches members. Um, if you are like, wait, I want to do a Worldwide Knit and Public Day meetup, first I would say check out your local yarn store if you have one, because a lot of times local yarn stores will do something for Worldwide Knit and Public Day. Um, I'm pretty sure that Knitty City does something in Bryant Park. I know they did last year. That's a store here in New York. Bliss Yarns in Nashville or Brentwood, Tennessee. Um, they typically have people like bring lawn chairs and like they kind of reserve a couple parking spots outside the store and like have people sit out there. Um, so, you know, you're, you're sure to find something if you have a local yarn store near you. If not, um, the app that I use a lot to find knitting groups is called Meetup. It's a free app and you can go on there and search for knitting and see if there are any groups nearby. So I would say, even if you can't find a group, get out there on June 10th for Worldwide Knit Public Day. It's always really fun to kind of share um, your knitting with other people and like, not even that you have to talk to people, but like that people see it out and about, spread the word, uh, recruit more people <laughs> to our really fun hobby. Okay, next question is, a two-parter. Well, it's really the same question from two people. I was, I'm always surprised when this happens, but two people asking a question about the same thing. I always think that's so fun. So the first one comes from Shayna. Um, hi, my daughter, 10 years old, and I watch your podcast and videos every week. Thank you for such, such fun content. I'm new to sock knitting. I do not have any sock blockers. Is there an alternative way to block my socks? And then somebody else, um, the knit tree said, what is the best way to block socks if you do not have a sock board? So I thought that was interesting. Two people in the same week asking how to block socks without sock blockers. So let's start with this. What's a sock blocker? So this is a wooden sock blocker. You may see also the metal sock blockers that are like an outline of a sock where they're hollow in the middle or there's plastic sock blockers. There's all sorts of materials. I have some really cool acrylic ones as well. Um, so what this is, is after you wash the sock 
with soapy water and you rinse it out and you, and you squeeze it out, you put it on here to dry. It just helps shape the sock. And especially if you have any patterning, um, color work for sure, it helps to kind of um, even out all of your stitches. If you're knitting a vanilla sock or a simple knit and purl pattern, you don't really need a sock blocker. I would say for color work socks, it does really help to have something to stretch it out on. But for socks like this, you really don't need it. Um, the best thing to do, I would say, is to lay your sock flat like this in kind of a profile view. That's going to lay the flattest. So you wash your sock, then you just literally lay it flat to dry like this. And then the thing that really blocks your sock, blocking is evening out your stitches, is wearing it. <laughs> so even when I block socks, I still sometimes have like those subtle, see the line right here from Magic Loop? I still sometimes have those lines even after blocking it, but wearing the sock actually kind of takes those lines away. So it doesn't really matter if you get your sock perfectly blocked, you can just lay it flat, profile side, profile side, and then wearing them is gonna do the rest of the work for you and even out your stitches. So no need to get something that you don't have to have. They're really more of a fun, fun accessory and they kind of help show things off in the podcast. Okay, next question is from, okay, hold on, Mar Maria, Mary Elena? Oh my gosh, your name is beautiful, and I'm sorry for having a hard time pronouncing it, um, but I hope I said it close to right. Um, here's the question. I am so inspired by your stash down, scrap free, reducing amount of tools. Your stashing down journey was how I found your channel. How do you deal with pushing past that what if feeling or when you let go of something, then wind up needing it later. For example, in an older video, you got rid of your DPNs, and then more recently, you wound up getting some sets. Thank you. Okay, that is right up my alley. You know I love talking about decluttering and getting rid of things. It is my favorite, and it is so freeing. Even if you can just let go of like one thing that you are not using or replace, um, replace something that you like know that you would rather have a different item and then let go of the one like once you replace it, it's so freeing, it feels so, so good. So a lot of times the reason that we don't want to let go of things is for because of like guilt. So we either feel guilty that um, we paid money for the item and then we didn't use it like we thought. That's a big one. Like, well, I paid for this, so I'm gonna keep it. Why? Now you're just like punishing yourself over and over again as you have to look at the item that you really don't want anymore. Don't do that to yourself. The cost is already sunk. You already spent the money. Let it go if you're not using it. Another thing is um, like we're worried, we're afraid, there's fear that we're going to need that item again. So how do you push past that? That was the question. Um, so when I'm trying to figure out what to keep and what to get rid of, it doesn't all, it doesn't happen like in an instant. I'm usually thinking about it for quite a while and I feel like this is breaking up with my item. So I'll kind of be like looking at my stuff and I'll be like, hmm, you know, those double pointed needles, I really don't use them a lot. Like I wonder, I'm gonna kind of keep an eye on things over the next month, you know, kind of setting a time period and see if I really use them. If I really need them. I've even done um, so far as to take um, several items that I'm like considering getting rid of, putting them out of sight, out of mind, and then setting a reminder in my phone to go um, make a decision on those items like one month, three months, six months down the line. If at any point that I need that item, I know where it is, I can go grab it and then I'm like, oh, okay, this is good to know. I actually need this item. Um, so that's a really good strategy too. But I don't just make a decision in an instant. These are well thought out decisions and very rarely have I regretted um, letting go of something. Most things that you get rid of are replaceable. Is it a little bit hard to replace something after you just got rid of it because you're like, oh, I, I had it already. I would already spent the money. Now I have to buy it again. Yes, it is a little bit annoying, but truth be told, if you really need something, you would replace it. So another question I like to, I'm way too into this, can you tell? Another question I like to ask myself is, if this broke, would I buy a new one? And if the answer is no, 
then you're probably okay letting it go. If this went missing, would I take the time, money, and space to replace it? If the answer is no, you can feel pretty good about getting rid of it. Um, I just want to address the double pointed needles really quick and explain why I got rid of some and then ended up buying some other ones. Actually, I was gifted the other ones, which was really, really kind. So I had a set of double pointed needles in sizes like double zero to three. And I bought them with the intent of using them to teach private lessons for sock knitting. I had, I think, one person that wanted to learn sock knitting on double pointed needles. So I purchased the needles, we did the lessons, and then I never needed them again. Um, but what I did realize is that for other projects with larger needle sizes, like size four, size five, I really wanted to have double pointed needles in those sizes. And when I thought about like what, uh, quality needles that I wanted or what like length of needle, I realized that the ones that I currently had were not fitting my current needs. So not only did I need different um, needle sizes, I wanted them to be a different brand, I wanted them to be shorter, and I was hanging on to them for a little bit and then I found somebody else that would use them more. So I got rid of them and about the same time somebody reached out to me. They were closing a physical like yarn store that they had and they had a bunch of double pointed needles and I said, you know what? Give me anything that you have from like size two to size eight. And that's what they gave me and that was such a blessing. And I have used those double pointed needles so much. I use them on the straps of this. I've used them for bind offs. I use them for I-cord. Um, so it's actually been really, really great to have those. And I also created my new space. I don't think, I think it's over there. Um, my new needle bag has that space for double pointed needles in the sizes that I need. So I was really, taking something that I wasn't using a lot and replacing it with something that actually fit my needs better. And then again, once you replace it, let go of the original. I know it's hard, but it's super freeing. What's actually funny right now is Kent literally right now is taking a bunch of bags of clothes that we were no longer wearing to a Salvation Army. So he literally just went, um, walked up 10 minutes to Salvation Army with a wagon and a bags full of stuff and he's just come back and I think he's loading up another load. I don't know. I can kind of hear him. You may hear him in the background. Um, we are in a big, big decluttering state right now and it feels very, very good. And again, I have maybe like two or three times um, been like, wow, I wish I'd actually kept X, Y, Z. But right at this moment, I can't even tell you what those items were, which tells me that they weren't that important in the first place. Okay, one last question. <laughs> They're so good, I love these discussions. We need to do like, some days I think it would be fun to have like an audio podcast where I could bring on guests and we could act like actually discuss these things because I love sharing um, your questions and like answering them to the best of my ability, but sometimes I feel like these lend a little more to a discussion, so that would be really fun. Last one from Eleonora. Thank you for all the amazing content you put out. I am a great fan. Thank you. My question is about the brain space slash bandwidth required for knitting. I work a challenging job and when I get home, I'm usually tired and want a mindless knit. I also knit a lot in public, which requires portable and easy knits. So I have too much mindless knitting time compared to the time it takes to properly finish garments and make the sometimes difficult decisions, do calculations, etc. So I have so many projects that just don't get finished or get finished very late. I already have more than enough dishcloths slash hand towels, so I'm not looking to knit more of these very easy projects. I would really love your perspective since it feels like I can't solve this on my own. Okay, I really feel for you on this one and I bet there's a lot of people out there that can relate to this. When I was a school teacher and I had a full-time out of the house job. It was much more draining and needed a lot more stamina than what I do now, or maybe that's not exactly true, but I'm able to build my own schedule so much more now that I've really noticed that that has changed the way I'm able to look at my knitting projects. And I'm able to spend a lot more time thinking about them and making decisions. And I just didn't, have that capacity when I was working outside of the house. And I know this is not going to be um, true for everybody, but even now I still find myself like 
needing to carve out a larger space of time for me to be able to make some of those decisions. For example, yesterday I was feeling pretty sick and I ended up taking the day off. I was feeling better towards the end of the day and I realized that I really wanted to work on my project plans. I think because I had stepped away from like work and everything, I was able to have that freed up brain space. I probably spent two hours um, doing math and making blanket squares trying to plan out this new Battenberg blanket and that's not just something you can like do on a whim on a weeknight most of the time. I really do see in my own schedule that probably once a month or so, I am spending a Saturday or a Sunday um, turning projects over, like making decisions about casting on new projects, making decisions about lingering whips, um, doing like the tedious finishing work. And even for me, I guess I'm trying to say like, even for me, even though like I designed my own schedule, my whole life is about knitting basically, I still find it hard. And so I know that it was even harder when I had a really demanding job outside of the house. So I really feel for you in this. My question for you is, why is it not okay to have mindless knitting projects? I mean, I think that's totally fine. I think for you, you're seeing that you're getting bored maybe with your knitting projects and you're like kind of tired of making dishcloths and other things like that. Um, Things that I find mindless that aren't mindless all the time are parts of projects, right? So like um, the tubing parts of socks can be really mindless. Starting them, not so much, but the part in between, pretty mindless. Um, bodies of sweaters, so like this, like all this part took focus and concentration, but from here up, I had 12 inches of knitting that was very simple and very easy. Um, long straight parts of shawls. Once you get started, you just follow the directions and can be very mindless. So I'm kind of wondering if may, oh, I just saw a pink car outside. I'm like, that's so cute. It's like a Barbie car. Okay. Sorry. Distraction. Um, maybe could you find a way to carve out a space for yourself once a month? Maybe could you take off a Friday? I know this is like a big like thing, but why not? Like if you have days off, like could you take off a Friday once a month? Because I feel like three day weekends really give me the um, capacity to like take on more of a mental load because on a three day weekend you have enough time to actually rest and maybe actually get some chores done and then like have a whole nother day, right? Um, so could you maybe once a month like take off a Friday or take off a Wednesday or something and have it be like a day to yourself to like do what you want to do with your knitting and that could be an opportunity for you to um, start new projects or finish up projects or think about what you want to make next, make the decisions that do take the brain space. And then that way on your evenings and weekends, you're not having to spend so much time thinking about things. If that seems like too much, could you then let's make it smaller. Could you, um, maybe on a Saturday, could you take a couple hours and like go to a coffee shop and like say, okay, I'm going to take with me my knitting bag and like my computer and a little notebook and I am going to go to the coffee shop and I am just going to like let myself pattern browse, let myself download patterns, mark them up, do the thinking, start a gauge swatch, whatever. And like, because you're getting out of your house environment, um, it feels more like a special thing. It feels more like, you know, you're ready to like work, work quote unquote for something fun. Um, maybe you can like carve that space out for yourself. Um, occasionally. I know it's really hard, um, but I don't want you to feel like you have to be stuck in making um, dishcloths and simple things. I think just sometimes the getting started on a project is the part that is really, really challenging or like moving to the next stage in a project, like moving from the body of a sweater to the raglan or moving from the raglan to the body. And then like once you get there, it's simple. So if you have something in your schedule once a month, every couple of weeks, that is special you time to work on those things, maybe that could be a possibility 
for you. If anyone has any tips on how to manage this, because I know it's hard and we all have different life circumstances, leave them down below. We would love to see all of your ideas. And if you have any questions for me, make sure to leave a comment with the hashtag question at the beginning so I can make sure to answer it in next week's podcast. The newest video is actually very fitting to one of the questions that we just answered about decluttering. I went through my entire finished objects drawer, I had 35 items, and I decluttered and downsized. I tried every single piece on and I talked about it and kind of shared about it and linked the project pages. So it's, I feel like it's a fun video just in that aspect. But then I also talked through all my decision making of why I was keeping stuff and why I was letting go of stuff. So the person who asked that question, you had a really beautiful name. Um, if you haven't seen that video, maybe that one will help. Even though it's finished objects, it's related to like letting go of, of items. Um, but I'm also giving away all of the FOs that I decided not to keep. Um, so if you're interested in uh, one of the items, there are shawls, there are sweaters, I include my measurements in the video um, so that you can see like if one of my sweaters would fit you. But then I saw somebody um, had an idea that even though they're not my size, that they could actually take the yarn, unravel it and make something else. And I think that's a great idea. I am not gonna be bothered one bit if you take one of my items that I made and you unravel it and make yourself something. Literally, I don't care. <laughs> I just want to, I know that these pieces are not, they're sitting right here in front of me, that's why I'm pointing. I know that these pieces are something that I already got a lot of joy out of making. I wore some of them for a little bit of time and now they're just not fitting into my lifestyle anymore and I want to share them um, with everybody else. So I am giving those away in that video. There's a form that you can fill out for the next two weeks. Um, it's gonna close on June 13th, so just make sure to watch the video, fill it out before then. Um, and if you want any of those items, you can enter to win them. And for each item, I'm just gonna be randomly selecting one person to send that item to. So that was really fun. Um, when I filmed that video, like I was legitimately making decisions and I had to take a break in the middle. I think I did like one hour of filming and decision making, took a two hour break and then came back and did another couple of hours. So whenever you're decluttering, it is a big mental load. So take breaks. Like if you feel yourself wearing down, like it is a sign to stop and get some food. <laughs> Usually that's what you need, food and rest. Um, next week, I am going to be sharing a Muscleboro cast on tutorial. So this is for the Muscleboro hat. I have been getting asked to make a tutorial for a short while now, and I figured that I would be, um, that. Or, what am I trying to say? I am happy to make that tutorial, and I figured I could add a little bit of something because I haven't seen a tutorial out there that does exactly it does the cast on exactly the way that I do it. So that tutorial will have the crochet pinhole cast on, which is something you can find out there. I learned it from Very Pink Knits, but I'm gonna show you the cast on and how to transfer it to needles in order to work the first row of the Muscleboro cast on, or the Muscleboro hat. That's where I'm going to stop because Muscleboro is a paid for pattern. I don't wanna give away any of the pattern and I'll have it linked in the description box of that video so that you can you know, use the two things um, in combination. So that one's coming out next week. If you're a Muscleboro hat knitter, um, be on the lookout for that. I'll probably be starting my new Muscleboro hat with my black yarn. I won't do the tutorial in black, don't worry. I'll pick a lighter color so it'll be easier to see. Um, the Cozy Along 2023 is ending today, which means by the time this video comes out, it is going to be over. So if you haven't already, if you're catching this podcast within the first two hours, you have until 12 p.m. on June 1st, 12 p.m. Eastern time on June 1st, to submit your finished cozies to the form or to use the hashtag CozyAlong2023 on Instagram. If you missed that, I'm sorry, <laughs> I will have already pulled for prizes, um, but we are going to have a closing ceremony where I'm gonna announce all the prize winners on Instagram on Friday, June 2nd at 12.30 p.m. Eastern time. So come over to the Nitty Natty Instagram on Friday, take a little lunch break with us. I'm gonna be giving away these beautiful prizes back here. 
just to quickly go over them um, again, we have Craft Nut Yarns. All these yarns will be linked down below. Rydell High. I actually have two skeins of these, so two lucky winners are going to get this beautiful pink with black speckles. Then we have Crafted by The Fates. This really lovely soft pink colorway is called um, The Things I Do for Love. It's very pretty. And then we have Frogget Yarns. This first one is a 50 gram, 250 gram um, sock yarns, and it is called Solstice and Winter Night. Winter's Night? Try to read it backwards. Winter's Night. <laughs> And then lastly, this really fun one, actually, you could totally make a ripple camisole out of this one. This is a really neat base from Froggit Yarns. It is a wool cotton, 50% wool, 50% cotton, and it is called Fresh Lilacs. So all of those, what was it, five yarns are going to be up for grabs if you use the hashtag cozy along 2023 or if you submitted the form and i will be announcing prize winners on friday june 2nd so thanks for knitting cozies knitting and crocheting cozies all throughout the month with me it's been a really really fun month so our next make along is coming up on july 9th it is sock week 2023 all the sponsor products just went live last Friday. In, I think, all of the shops, we still have some stuff left. I'll have the link to the Sock Week info page, which then links to all of the different shops down below. But the thing that you need to know that's coming up next is that all of the merchandise, so the t-shirts and everything with the logo and the Sock Week fabric is going to be coming out this Friday. So first, these beautiful, Sharky fabrics designed by Devin of Pencils and Parsley are going to be in her spoon flower shop. So there's the tangerine color, which comes in two different size prints. And this is the designer of our Sock Week logo too. But if you look closely, look, there's a little shark with a heart. The palm trees have coconut uh, yarn balls, there's socks, there's a coconut um, yarn ball drink. They're so, so cute. So tangerine, and this is fabric. And then there's also pink fabric. And the cool thing is that you can get just the fabric if you are somebody who sews or knows somebody who sews who could make you, you know, a project bag or something. I don't sew, so I'm not able to do that myself, but I know there's a lot of creative people out there. But you can also order different um, fabric items from the Spoonflower shop if you want to. There's like stick on wallpaper, which I thought would be super cute to like line a drawer or something. There are even like bedding, curtains, pillows. I don't know if anybody is up for a little sock week custom fabric items in their house, but there's lots of home decor. So that will be in Devin's Spoonflower shop, which I will have linked. And then I'm going to be selling logo merchandise, which is going to be t-shirts, um, mostly just t-shirts and sweatshirts and things like that. That will be in my um, spread shop, which you can find at knittingshirts.com. So I just had to pull these out of the dirty clothes because I've been wearing them so much. I should have washed them, but this is our logo from Pencils and Parsley. So I have this is the um, knotted like women's shirt that I wear all the time. I love this. It's got the Love and Stitches logo on the front and the uh, Sock Week logo on the back. And then this is probably my favorite one. This is the women's cropped tee. I put the logo on the front, like nice and small. And I love this color because it looks like sand. And then the Love and Stitches logo is on the back. And then this one's actually clean. This is Kent's. He hasn't been wearing his as much as I've been wearing mine. Um, but he's got the logo here on the front. This is the men's t-shirt and Love and Stitches on the back. With Spreadshop, you can customize um, any item. So even if you don't see an item uh, specifically designed how you want it, you can take the Love and Stitches logo and the Soft Week logo and like move them around on any item. There's also like coffee mugs, all kinds of stuff. So 
both the fabrics and the merchandise is going to be going on sale this Friday, June 2nd at 12 p.m. Eastern Time, and it will remain up through the end of Sock Week, which is July 16th. So you'll have plenty of time to order and get your items. But of course, if you live um, internationally, you might want to go ahead and do that on the earlier side. I also just think it's fun to go ahead and get things um, so that you can wear your shirts um, throughout the summer and throughout Sock Week. Since Sock Week is only eight days long, I've been trying to get as much wear out of my stuff as possible. So all of that is coming up this Friday. And then of course, Sock Week itself is July 9th through July 16th. And I'll have more about the events that are going to be part of the Sock Week paid package, uh, probably in next week's podcast. Last thing is just Worldwide Knit and Public Day is coming up on Saturday, June 10th. I'm going to be in Bryant Park, um, not like hosting anything, like I'm going to be a participant. Um, I'm also going to be uh, doing a Zoom with my members out of Bryant Park as well because I want to be able to go and join um, everyone there when the event starts. Um, so it's going to be a fun day. I'm crossing my fingers. It's not going to be too hot. It can definitely get hot in June, um, but so far this week the weather has been stunning. So hopefully it stays that way for another week. <laughs> This week I thought it would be fun to kind of look at the past week through the lens of places that I have knit because in the Love and Stitches membership this week we had a challenge to record all of the places that you have knit or crocheted. So different rooms of your house were different places and of course if you went out and about like those different areas would be different places. So I am always somebody who is like knitting on the go, knitting in public places, but especially this week, I was paying close attention to where I was knitting and I took pictures of it <laughs> to kind of keep track for myself. So let's start with last Tuesday. So I met with my friend Charles at a coffee shop and we sat outside and I crocheted on my crochet advent baby blanket. He was working on a beret and we had a really grand time just like outside um, crocheting. Uh, I was crocheting, he was knitting. And then we actually um, I, I was walking to Pilates, he was walking um, to his train, and we knitted and walked together, which was really, really great. It was so much fun. Um, speaking of knitting and walking, on Friday, I, wait, this is the same day. Was this the same day? No, this was a different day. Later in the week, on Friday, I was walking to Pilates, so I got to uh, enter another location for myself, knitting and walking to Pilates. That night, we also went to see Bad Cinderella, um, which is a Broadway musical that is closing soon. Um, so we wanted to see it before it closed. I actually quite liked it. And I know there's a lot of people that are gonna be upset with me for saying this, but I actually think Bad Cinderella was better than Phantom um, because they have the same writer or whatever. Um, so I thought it was pretty good. I mean, it's not like the best I've ever seen. It was definitely pretty cheesy, but I enjoyed the music and the dancing and all of that. So it was great. Um, then on Saturday, I just was feeling super motivated. I like woke up on Saturday at around the time that I normally wake up during the week without an alarm. And you know when you wake up without an alarm and you feel so good? So I was like, I feel so good. I'm gonna take my crochet blanket um, down to the park that's right next door to our apartment building. And we have these really cool concrete like lounge chairs and nobody was out there cause it was eight o'clock on a Saturday. And so I went out there and I sat with my crochet um, blanket and I worked on it and I ate my breakfast and I drank my coffee and I listened to um, Boston Jen's podcast. And a woman came up to me, she had a little dog and she was like, are you making an Afghan? And I was like, yeah, I'm making, well, I'm actually making a blanket for my dog. And so she was asking me all kinds of questions about it. I was telling her about Fangirl Fibers and um, the pattern name. And I asked her if she was on Ravelry and all of that. So it was very, it was a very nice interaction. Pretty unusual for somebody to actually like approach you and talk to you in New York. But I guess being that I was in a residential area and like, sitting alone crocheting, it was pretty, it wasn't that unusual. If you're like on the train and stuff in New York, people usually don't bother you very much. Um, then on Sunday, I met my friend 
Megan for some knitting and coffee. She was knitting on a half and half wrap by Pearl Soho and I was knitting on my socks and then I also worked on my blanket for a little bit. And then we walked along the pier. So that was another location. I switched my sock project for that. And then finally on Sunday, I met up with Kent and we saw The Little Mermaid and I knitted a little bit more on one of my socks. I actually tried crocheting a little bit during the movie. That movie, if I had to rate it um, for knitability, was probably like a 7 out of 10. There was a lot of light scenes, so it was kind of easy to see. Um, but I couldn't quite like count my stitches and crochet and I'm not good enough. I, I really can't crochet without looking, so I only did maybe like 20 stitches and then I gave that up and just used the blanket um, that I was carrying around with me as like an actual blanket because I was getting very cold. <laughs> um, on now coming back to this week, Tuesday, yesterday, I was walking to an appointment. So I was walking on a different street. So I counted that as another location while, while I worked on a sock. So in total, that was eight different places um, outside of the house. Plus I got to count my own bedroom because I knit in bed every day and the couch slash living room. So lots of different places um, knitting and crocheting this week and it was a really fun uh, kind of way to like look at my knitting and crochet projects in a different way. Okay, I have finished reading Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. I talked about it last week so I'm not going to talk about it too much more but I really did enjoy the book. Honestly, up until the very end, I don't know why at the end it felt like a little cheesy to me. And it's definitely a cheesy book and I enjoyed the entire thing. Um, I think, I don't know what changed for me at the end of the book, but I was kind of like, yeah, all right, like, <laughs> okay, you know, happy ending, whatever. Like, I knew it was going to be happy, happy ending, but um, I don't know. I just, like, I didn't like the end of the book as much as the beginning, even though I like how the characters ended up if that makes any sense. Um, but it was really good and I'm definitely gonna read more Abby Jimenez. Um, then I started reading a true romance novel, um, like X-rated <laughs> romance novel called Love and Horns by J.B. Sharp. Um, I am almost done, I'm like 75% of the way through this book. It's been a really quick one to read, super steamy, definitely a turn, a left turn away from the previous book that I was reading. Not as sweet, definitely like some characters that have issues and all of that. Um, but the cool thing about this book is that this book is from, is written by uh, somebody that is a knitter and they reached out to me on Instagram when they saw that I was reading some romance novels and said like, hey, I've written a romance novel. Like, if you want to read it, like, just let me know. Like, here's what it's about. And I was like, yep, sounds perfect to me. And they sent me a copy um, via Kindle. And so I knew that once I got to kind of a pause and like the books I already had lined up, I would read it. And I, like I said, I'm almost done with it. Um, definitely X-rated, definitely a lot of cursing, um, definitely a lot of problematic characters. So just FYI, <laughs> if you kind of, um, before you like read the book, maybe read the description and just see if it's right for you. But if you like a steamy romance novel, I think you're gonna like it. Um, then we watch this week, The Little Mermaid. We went to see the new live action Little Mermaid. Um, I really enjoyed it. I don't think it's my favorite live action movie. I actually was a little disappointed um, in the first like 30 minutes or so because those first core songs, um, Part of Your World and Under the Sea, they changed the music like a little bit. And I guess I just wasn't expecting that. They didn't change it a lot. I think they kind of changed it to like fit, like show off the vocals of the people who were singing. And I was like, wait, they changed that note and it like doesn't feel right. And so I was feeling like a little unsure. And then as the movie went on, it got like so good. It was fantastic. I think they added some new songs. I definitely know they added like a rap in, which was very funny. Um, so it ended up being really, really good. So I definitely recommend going to see it. The only other thing that I didn't really like was that the um, animals, I feel like they looked too realistic. <laughs> and I know that's silly, but like the talking animals, I just expected them to look a little more cartoon-like and I felt like they looked too real. <laughs> 
I don't know why that bothered me, but let me know what you thought. That's me nitpicking. It was a fantastic movie. And then last night, Kent and I watched Wally on Disney Plus. Um, I had never seen Wally, and I think we were just loving the Disney stuff, and we were both taking a day off yesterday, not feeling super great. And so we were just like, let's watch a Disney movie. And I cannot believe I had never seen Wally. It was so good. Um, there was so many good messages in the movie. Um, such an interesting, like, I just thought it was so fascinating that basically the first half hour of the movie, there's almost no dialogue and how it was such a capturing movie. Even with that, I just loved like, I love futuristic movies too and seeing like how they had all the robots interacting and things so I thought it was really really good so um is it crazy that I've never seen Wally? -E? I can't believe I hadn't seen it but definitely would recommend it it was that brings us to our tip of the week this one is going to be pretty specific so bear with me here if you are somebody who likes to knit and walk around or just knit while you're standing basically i'm going to give you a tip that i love to use so these little yarn pockets they're just part one of the tip um they are from cottontail farms this is the sock week one but she makes tons of other fabrics they have a little leather snap so i like to fasten this to my backpack strap that i use as my purse backpack and it just hangs i like to hang it on my left side and then I can just walk around. And I, I guess you could probably put it on your wrist, but I can't stand having something hanging from my wrist while I'm trying to knit. Um, if you're just like standing, or if you wanna put this on a treadmill or a bike, that would totally work. You can also just use this as a cozy. But here's where the tip comes in. Because I have a limited number of these, and they're a little bit, they're not like bulky, but like bulkier than the yarn itself in a project bag. I actually like to change out the project that I am using, like knitting on the go. And taking your yarn in and out of the yarn pocket can kind of mess with the cake. So my tip is to use knitted or crochet yarn cozies as sort of a liner. So this is already kind of a cozy in itself but i just use this as the carrying point and when i want to switch my projects i just take it out and then i can put wait which side is it i can put another sock project that also has a cozy and i can put it in here and it's kind of like a liner it just protects the the um yarn so that i can like move it around whatever i need to do so now i can take this project out and about on the go. And then if I need to change it out, I just pull the whole thing out with it's cozy. So I know that's pretty specific, but this is something that I've noticed um, enhances my knitting experience. And it means that I'm not putting wear and tear on the yarn cake. It's not falling apart as much because I have those cozies around it and they work perfectly with these, which are super awesome. Thank you so much for watching. I'm sure this was another extra long podcast. So thanks for bearing with me with my cold and everything this week. Everything we've talked about today will be linked down below. If I forget something, which often happens, just let me know and I'll make sure to add it in. All right, everyone. I will see you in the next one.